In this video, I want to explore the method of foliar feeding orchids, but we're going to take a deep dive because there's more to foliar feeding than just adding fertilizer or a supplement concentration into the mister and off we go. I will cover the concentration levels for different scenarios, from weak orchids to time of day, including setups even if the orchids are dotted around in your landscape and the trees, as well as environmental influences. So I hope that you enjoy the visual of orchids getting misted, seeing how roots green up or not, and the visual of orchids dripping in goodness without any risk of damage because everything I say in this video is what I apply to my collection and the orchids subjected to foliar feeding do not have any salt buildup on their roots or the surface of their pots where relevant. This video will give you all the ins and outs of this effective method of fertilizing your orchids. good to have you here. Thank you for your interest. I'm convinced that you have heard it all when it comes to foliar feeding orchids, but I doubt very much you have heard the details of why sometimes it doesn't work for you. As mentioned, there is more to it than just adding water into your mister. Foliar feeding, while not quite a science, because if it were, I would be lost, it is not simple, straightforward. For best results, the timing has to be right, and by timing I mean you need to think of your environment, plus many other little details to make this an effective method of getting nutrients into your orchid. So before starting with the tips on how to maximize the results of your foliar feeding endeavors, let me bring a few things to your attention that maybe you have not thought of. Those being that you can foliar feed any orchid, be it that it is potted up, mounted, or those you may have in your landscape, including the weak, the recovering ones, the rootless ones, as well as seedlings. As a matter of fact, foliar feeding your mounted orchids and those that you have in your landscape, as well as the weak, rootless ones, is probably more important because they have different challenges to deal with in order to survive. While orchids in their natural habitat get everything from Mother Nature, they also get pests that no one deals with, they will get burnt if a branch breaks that provided the much needed shade, etc. All sorts of things happen out there, but in cultivation we try to avoid that. So in our attempt to grow healthy and strong orchids, we have all this ammunition of fertilizer and supplements because we're strengthening the cuticle of the structure and sunburn may or may not happen depending on if we forgot to move our orchids from one area to another. In what I just said lies all the clues that you need to think of when it comes to foliar feeding, so let's explore the environment your orchids are in. And no matter what, I am going to go into further detail on the one thing that has to be at the forefront of your foliar feeding regime is you do not want salt buildup. Not on the leaves, not on the roots, not on the surface of the pots, nowhere. Your environment may or may not change. You grow your orchids where you grow them, indoors, outdoors, or a combination of both, if conditions permit, but you always have to think about your airflow when you're going to fold your feed. Normally, we go about fertilizing our orchids when they are in active growth. That always includes roots in my collection, even if the orchid is not growing a new growth at the same time. We do not want any salt buildup around the orchids that we are foliar feeding because that will burn the roots, the velamen, the root tips, the nubbins even as they are emerging. Think about the water droplets that collect at the tip of a root and then think of how much airflow you have. You see, quite rightly, we always consider our new growths to be very fragile for rot issues to be introduced when we mist our leaves and the risk is real. However, with sufficient airflow, we can dry that structure out. Now though, I'm going to point something out when it comes to airflow that is super important and that is the drying out of the moisture while it will avoid any rot from occurring in the new growth is of course also going to evaporate faster around the roots where the mist are reached as well, or water droplets fell onto. If the concentration of your foliar feed was too high, then the first impact will be root burn, because the roots were not able to absorb the nutrients fast enough before the water evaporated. Remember also, new roots have a Teflon effect, so water won't penetrate. But what will happen is the water will evaporate, leaving salts behind if the concentration is too high. For that reason, your thought process when it comes to your concentration level is to ask yourself these questions. How fast is the moisture going to evaporate? How much airflow do I have today? Do I have to turn some fans off so that the moisture won't evaporate too soon, leaving salts behind? How high is my humidity? 
What time of day is it and what are the orchids in question even going to be able to absorb any nutrients via their cuticles? Which orchids am I planning to treat? Am I treating all of them across the board? There are more questions, but these are the ones that cruise around my head when I go around my collection with the intent of foliar feeding. And here is how I come to my conclusion without having to mix several batches of different fertilizer concentration for the different cases I foliar feed. I prepare one bucket. As an example, if I intend to address all the orchids from the largest banded to the weakest recovering orchid, then the concentration is geared right up there to the max for the largest orchid. But hear me out. The preparation of one bucket is to make life easier. So, as an example, my single bucket has a concentration of whatever it is I'm going to administer, but it would be at 300 parts per million because that could also involve supplements. My recommendations for foliar feeding doesn't just apply to fertilizer, but, you know, supplements as well. So I take the 300 parts per million and depending on the orchids I'm addressing, I either fill my mister full of 300 parts per million of the solution and with that I mist my large Vanderpole, my Stanhopia and Cousin It. All my large orchids that can handle this high amount of fertilizer, that is what I start with at full concentration. But there is more to this, so bear with me please, it's not a one-off application. Orchids that do not require 300 parts per million get half the quantity because I will only fill my mister to 50% and then top up with plain water to dilute the concentration to get 150 parts per million and then I can do the same to get to 100 parts per million for the small and the weak or recovering orchids. Now, seeing as a lot of concentration falls on the roots as mentioned, we are not in the business of purposely burning our roots. That is why the low concentration of 300 parts per million for a large orchid is ideal because nothing evaporates too soon. There is no threat to anything burning. The nutrients can be absorbed at that weak concentration. Keep in mind, foliar feeding orchids is not a one and done. The larger orchids may need a second go around, which will then double the concentration to 600 parts per million, but without burning anything and without wasting product. You can see how much water is going everywhere, dripping down and getting lost in the process of misting. So a lot of product goes to waste. Keeping the concentration to a low, but doubling the application will give your orchids sufficient nutrients and you do not risk doing any damage to the root system. Especially vital when you mist your orchids that are in pots. You're already fertilizing your orchids via the root system because your orchid is potted up. Now you come in and do something wonderful for your orchid and give it some foliar feed as well. And yikes, not that there's anything wrong with that, but the orchid is getting it from all sides now. But with a low concentration, it will be on the safe side of things. This is the safest way that I recommend you go about foliar feeding your orchids because it poses no risk to your roots while your orchid can still absorb the nutrients. And it can apply to any climate, any grow environment, indoors, outdoors, dry climate, low humidity, strong wind day, less wind day, high humidity, etc. Staying conservative on the concentration and administering two applications will double the quantity if needed. Usually our seedlings, potted orchids and weak orchids need a break from the nutrients so we do not do those daily, maybe every second day and probably not two times per day because they are not exposed to the harsher elements or the conditions so they don't need the application every day two times per day. But our big established orchids that are in active growth most definitely do. But then there are days during the season where the conditions are so perfect, days like the following make foliar a one and done for the day and for how long those perfect conditions last. And those are the days when the humidity is above 80% with a bit of airflow. Again, this can be achieved indoors. It is not exclusively pertaining to outdoors. On days with conditions of 80% and higher, the concentration can also be higher without fear of burning anything. The moisture in the air is going to buffer against any airflow that may cause premature evaporation and wow, when I have days like those, I'm not messing around. My Vanda and my Stanhopia get the full 600 parts per million straight away and I don't have any signs of burning velamen or salt accumulation in Stan the Man's basket. So if you're fortunate to have those conditions and are foliar feeding your orchids, 
you don't have to tiptoe around the higher concentration mark. Whoever Bob was, well, in those conditions, he is your uncle. <laughs> when I have a day like that come up, it's what I like to call it's go time and it's grow time and be generous and enjoy the process. No fear. That is exactly the time you really want to go for it and foliar feed those orchids without any risk of any burn or any salt accumulation anywhere. So while we speak of perfection, <laughs> Here comes a caveat. Make sure while foliar feeding and with the perfect conditions that I just mentioned that you actually do the deed during a time of day when the stomata of your orchids are open so that they can absorb the nutrients. Because if they are closed, then it will only be the root system that receives the benefits of the nutrients, which is not a bad thing. But if the intention is to actually foliar feed, then the time of day is relevant. Any orchids that have thin leaves, also equating to thin cuticles, these open their stomata during the day. So the foliar feeding on orchids like these will only be effective during the day. However, orchids with thick cuticles, they open their stomata at night. And if we go around foliar feeding those during the day, well, that is kind of a pointless exercise for the sake of foliar feeding. Orchids that open their stomata at night are a little trickier to administer any form of misting because the norm is to not have orchids go into the night wet. So that is where the timing aspect is important. Ideally, you want to be up bright and early before the crack of dawn to foliar feed your orchids with thick cuticles so that they have time to absorb the nutrients before their stomata close, or if that is not an option, then late afternoon, close to dusk, could be the opposite end of the day for optimal foliar feeding time. But then again, are your conditions ideal for orchids to be damp going into the night? In my case, during the summer months, absolutely. But during the winter, I do not foliar feed anything that has to be indoors for those months. Orchids that can handle the outdoor temperatures with the exception of my Stanhopia, yes, I will miss them down if I want to foliar feed them. So timing, muy importante. Again, if the root system gets some of the nutrients with stomata closed because the timing was off, that's fine. However, I do want to emphasize that there are procedures for successful foliar feeding. Otherwise, it is not foliar feeding, if that makes any sense at all. Even if so far it does not make sense, would you please like this video so that it tells the algorithm it is worth recommending it to a bigger audience? Thank you so, so much. I hope that at the end of this video, it will all make sense and you can make a calculated decision if foliar feeding is what you want to continue doing or if you're going to change how you go about it or even if it's too much of a fuss. Considering the details and thought process required behind this method to actually do it right. Inadvertently, many of our mounts or vendaceous orchids are getting foliar fed when we miss the roots and the nutrients drop off onto the leaves. Or are they? Cuticle thickness or thinness will determine if your mount or vendaceous orchids are getting any nutrients through the leaves. If you're able to foliar feed early in the morning because your lifestyle permits it, then that is the best and safest time of day. If you're not in position to do so early in the morning, then what I used to do was only foliar feed during the summer at dusk for my thick cuticle orchids and skip the colder months of the year entirely. Whereas my thin cuticle orchids would get their application in the morning before I left the house. And that's also only from spring to early fall. Know that foliar feeding is not a must for the majority of our orchids, so it's not as if I'm trying to add another level of care to your routine if you have not been foliar feeding up until you've watched this video. There is no I must foliar feed my orchids at all, with the exception of weak orchids or rootless orchids. The only way they are able to actually absorb any form of nutrients to hopefully bring them through and support their fight for survival is to foliar feed. Oh, but I have to add a huge warning here because the quantities of the parts per million we are talking about have to be minimal and I suggest 50 parts per million only, be it fertilizer or supplements because while foliar feeding can be a boost, the orchids are not exactly absorbing nutrients through the stomata like sponges. The quantities absorbed are minute, so keep that in mind. Meanwhile, I saved my Cattleya Maxima back in the day by submerging her leaves upside down in a weak fertilizer alternating with cow mag solution every other night. I just took a tall vessel and placed the orchid into it upside down. 
while I did have her in the water for the whole night at times. That is only because I forgot her until the next morning. Submerging an orchid in a very bad state longer does not equate to it being more effective. Doing this can also drown your weak orchid even if you do not have the whole orchid submerged. Remember, the stomata are there to breathe. If we have the leaves completely submerged for an extended period of time, the orchid will drown. So if this method is something you would want to try, then for the safety of your orchid and for effectiveness, I recommend you take the orchid and submerge for 30 minutes, then let dry, then another 30 minutes, and then let dry. If you can, do this every day with a thin cuticle orchid and every night with a thick cuticle orchid. It sounds tedious, and it is, but I have learned that it works. If you skip a day or a night or two or three, then that won't be an issue, but giving such an orchid access to nutrients on a regular basis will at least give it a chance to get some energy into it and hopefully get some roots to grow, new growth to grow, something some sign of anything that will indicate she is going to be okay eventually. And of course, maintain humidity high around such an orchid so that the breathing of the stomata does not dry the orchid out from within either. But you see, there is more to foliar feeding than meets the eye. If you're interested in more videos like this, please check out my playlist on Orchid Lingo where I cover Orchid Lingo in depth, just like I did with foliar feeding in this video. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, I'm hoping that this video will convince you that supporting the growth of the channel is not a waste of your or your orchid's time. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate that very much. So how can you actually tell if you're doing it right or wrong? If what you're doing is effective or harmful? Well, the quickest sign that your fertilizer concentration is too high will be the white residue on your leaves because that is where the excess of the fertilizer will show up first after the moisture has evaporated. You won't see salt accumulation on the surface of your pots as quickly because the media will absorb water and evaporation is much slower there. So. Here's an example. If you have ever received new orchids in the mail and see white marks that are superficial, that is quite often fertilizer residue which remained on the leaves after the moisture has evaporated, seeing as nurseries also go around watering from above. If you have hard water, then you would see similar residue forming because of the calcium in your water. But normally we should not be watering our orchids with hard water. While the residue won't damage your leaves and is easily wiped off, which is something I recommend you do because clean leaves for the next go around will give you a benchmark as to your next lower fertilizer concentration. Because if you do get some residue on your leaves, the next go around, you should be dropping that nutrient concentration quite a bit and then see if the residue reoccurs and continue until you don't see any residue left behind once everything's evaporated. Now, if you happen to have a very dry day and you never get any residue on your leaves for many, many applications and then one day they appear, that is because the humidity has dropped in your environment. That is different, and it could just be a one-off. In cases of getting the hang of how high, low your nutrient concentration should be, and while you dial in the sweet spot, make sure to either flush your pot through to avoid salt buildup at the surface, or dilute the surface of your pot by misting with plain water to make sure that the evaporation process is slowed down even further, giving the nutrients time to dissolve and or get absorbed before showing up as salt buildup. Meanwhile, here's my Epidendrum Stamfordianum, rescued by foliar feeding as per what I talked about in this video. It was a three year process. While the older structures have died back, I have two that don't look the part, but they are functioning and have held on in order to grow the best growth this orchid has ever grown since it arrived in my collection in 2018 as a very sickly looking orchid. Everything I mentioned in this video is what I did with this orchid and from having a rootless orchid back in 2021, I now have a root system in the pot that was only possible because of the information provided in this video without any sign of salt buildup on the surface of the media. Remember, you do not want salt buildup occurring. Too much TLC that is not doing right by your orchid. When it comes to foliar feeding, a little goes a long way. We just don't think it does because it can take so long before we see any results. That is not because the method doesn't work. That is because our orchids have a very slow metabolism and many factors can cause our orchids not to respond straight away, which can include acclimation periods, 
setbacks, and stalling periods. Take the information in this video on board, fold your feet the right way, the effective way, be diligent, and above all, be patient. If you have any questions pertaining to a specific case, ask away in the comments and let me know if I can be of any help at all. I will also link a need help form in the description for you to fill out if you would like to send me images of your specific case. In addition to that, the form allows you to fill out a lot of other information about your conditions, etc., which gives me an x-ray vision into how you grow your orchid. This service is a first come first serve response. And while I try to get back to everyone within 48 hours, if you become an orchid ninja, that would be a member on my channel, it will give you privileges and expedite your form, resulting in a faster response and long-term backup for you and your orchid. I would take advantage of the service if you are in any way, shape or form in doubt about what is going on, if you have any questions, even if it doesn't exactly pertain to the subject of this video, it is a very, very useful tool, which I hope you will make work in your favor. In the meantime, I hope this video was helpful. I appreciate that you stayed to the end because it gives me the opportunity to thank you for watching until the end. That kind of support goes a long way as well. Thank you so, so much. It also gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day on that one condition, though please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.